Good morning everyone. Welcome to the course Stability Aspects of Structural Steel Design Concepts and Applications. In the last class we talked about torsional constant for open cross sections. In this class we will talk about torsional constant for closed cross sections. So torsional constant for a closed cross section. Consider a membrane under torsion with closed cross section as shown in the figure. So the right hand side figure shows you a closed cross sections. The assumptions are the wall thickness T is small compared to the other dimensions of the cross section. Here A sub E is the area enclosed by the mean perimeter of the cross section, which is not the cross sectional area, but the area enclosed by the cross section. The sections through the membrane are approximately straight lines, which means that there is no variation in the thickness direction. So let us cover this section with an elastic membrane and apply pressure P, as you can see on the right hand side. The membrane undergoes deformation with zero slope in hollow area. S is the surface tension, is also known as the force per unit length, as you can see from the right hand side of the picture. The step one is to determine this stress function phi. From the previous solution for torsional moment T, the equilibrium equations for a member under torsion are based on elasticity method. It is dou square phi by dou x square plus dou square phi by dou i square equal to minus 2g theta. Based on Prandtl's membrane analogy, it is dou square z by dou x square plus dou square z by dou i square equal to minus p by s. So, taking proportionality of analogous terms, we can take that z is directly proportional to phi, which implies z equal to c into phi, which is equation 1, and c is also known as the constant of proportionality. So, it, z equal to c into phi is described on the figure on the right hand side. So, minus p by s is directly proportional to minus 2 g theta. So, we have minus p by s equal to minus 2 c g theta, which becomes equation 2. Now, dividing equation 1 by equation 2 to eliminate constant, we have z by minus p by s equal to phi by minus 2 g theta, which implies phi equal to 2 g theta s by p into z, which indicates that the stress function phi is a function of z but not x and y. Step 2 is to determining the resultant shear stress using this stress function P equal to 2 g theta s by P into z. So, the shear stress component along the y direction is given as tau z y equal to minus dou phi by dou x which is equation 3. We have already derived this in the previous classes. Shear stress component along x direction equal to tau z x equal to dou phi by dou y which is equation 4. Now, both these equations indicate that since phi is a function of z, the stress components should be 0. However, to ensure equilibrium of membrane at any cross section along z direction, the resultant shear stress should be equal to T which is the externally applied torque. So, let us determine the resultant shear stress. Consider L be contour of stress function T of x comma y equal to constant as you can see from the right hand side of the picture. Then the stress function phi satisfied D of phi of x comma y by dl equal to 0. So, using chain rule of differentiation, we have dou phi by dou x into dx by dl plus dou phi by dou y into dy by dl is equal to 0. Now, substituting the values of equation 3 and 4 in the above equation, we have minus tau zy into dx by dl plus tau zx into dy by dl is equal to 0, which gives equation 5. Now, consider a small arc of length dl with normal n as you can see from the right hand side of the picture. So, rewriting dx by dl and dy by dl in terms of normal n. So, from a small geometry of small arc dl, we have this components minus dx in the x direction and dy in the y direction. So, theta 1 and theta 2 are as described in the figure and the triangle is ABC. So, from triangle ABC, we have theta 1 plus theta 2 plus 90 degrees equal to 180 degrees because the summation of angles in a triangle should be equal to 180 degrees. So, this indicates that theta 2 is equal to 90 minus theta 1. Now, we have the normal dn here and then we have dy and minus dx and we have the point at that point is O which makes an angle also theta 2 as you can see here. Then the angle covered by minus dx and dn is given as x. So, at point O, x plus theta 2 is equal to 90 degrees because the angle between the dn and the dotted line is actually 90 degrees. Therefore, x plus theta 2 should be equal to 90 degrees. So, we have x plus 90 degrees 
minus theta 1 equal to 90 degrees. We get this because we are substituting theta 2 equal to 90 minus theta 1 from the above equation. So, we get x equal to theta 1. Since x equal to theta 1, we have in the bigger triangle sin theta 1 is equal to opposite by hypotenuse. So, it becomes minus dx by dl. Similarly, in the smaller triangle on the upper side of the figure, we have x. So, we so x is nothing but theta 1. So, sin theta 1 is equal to opposite by hypotenuse. In this case, it is dy by dl. So, equating these two equations, we have minus dx by dl is equal to dy by dn. So, now using direction cosines, we have cos n comma y is equal to dy by dn. Now, what is direction cosine? For example, for a vector n equal to xi plus yj plus zk, the direction cosines are cos n comma x equal to i into n vector divided by modulus of n vector which is actually i into xi plus yj plus zk divided by root of x square plus y square plus z square. We know that i into i is a dot product which is equal to 1. So, this becomes x and the remaining terms yj and zk become 0 because i into j is equal to 0 and i into k is equal to 0. And the modulus term is represented as the magnitude which is given as root of x square plus y square plus z square. So, now similarly cos n comma y equal to j into n vector divided by modulus of n vector which again is j dot xi plus yj plus zk divided by root of x square plus y square plus z square again cos n comma y equal to y by modulus of n vector. Similarly, we have cos n comma z equal to k by n vector. So, now we have minus dx by dl is equal to dy by dn is equal to cos n comma y. So, that is highlighted in the box in the red color box. Now, cos theta 1 in the bigger picture here is adjacent by hypotenuse which is given as dy by dl. And similarly, cos theta 1 in the smaller triangle above the picture here is minus dx by dn which is adjacent by hypotenuse. Here adjacent is minus dx and the hypotenuse is dn. So, equating these two equations we have dy by dl equal to minus dx by dn. So, you again using direction cosines cos n comma x equal to dx by dn. So, we have minus dy by dl equal to dx by dn equal to cos n comma x. Again, we have highlighted that in the red color box. So, now let us determine the resultant stress. So, substituting the previous direction cosines in equation 5, we get tau zy into cos n comma y plus tau zx into cos n comma x is equal to 0, which is equation 6. The shear stress components at normal L can be illustrated as follows. So, we have an arc in this direction. The tangent to the arc here, we have a normal vector and then we have the shear components tau zx and tau zy and then the resultant of shear stress along unit normal N is given as tau n equal to tau zx into cos n comma x plus tau zy into cos n comma y which becomes equation 7. So, equating 6 and 7 we get tau n is equal to 0. So, the resultant of shear stress along tangent to contour line n. Previously, we had along the normal n. Now, we have tangent to the contour line n. So, we have the tangent which is tau zy comma l in the direction of the arrow and then we have tau zx comma l in the direction opposite to the direction of the arrow. So, we have tau l equal to tau zy comma l minus tau zx comma l which along the contour line can be rewritten as tau zy into sin n comma y minus tau zx into sin n comma x. But from the direction cosines, we also know that sin n comma y equal to cos n comma x and sin n comma x equal to cos n comma y. So, we can change this direction cosines from sin to cos by the following equations above. So, we have tau l equal to tau zy into cos n comma x minus tau zx into cos n comma y. The equations to be substituted are given here. So, minus dx by dl equal to dy by dn equal to cos n comma y which gives rise to the equation dy by dn equal to cos n comma y. Similarly, minus dy by dl equal to dx by dn equal to cos n comma x which indicates that dx by dn equal to cos n comma x. So, we can substitute the same in tau l which, which gives tau l equal to tau zy into dx by dn minus tau zx into dy by dn. But we also know that from equations 3 and 4, tau zy equal to minus dou phi by dou x and tau zx equal to dou phi by dou y. So, when we substitute 3 and 4 in the above equation, we have 
tau l equal to minus dou phi by dou y into dx by dn minus dou phi by dou y into dy by dn. So, tau l equal to minus dou phi by dou y into dx by dn minus dou phi by dou x into dy by dn. So, using chain rule, we get the value tau l equal to minus d phi by dn. So, applying modulus on both sides, we get tau l equal to d phi by dn. Now, for a stress function phi, the resultant shear stress along tangent to contour line tau l equal to d phi by dn. So, the substituting the stress function phi for the cross section is phi equal to 2 g theta s by p into c. So, tau l equal to d phi by dn. So, when we substitute the equation, we get d by dn equal to 2 g theta s by p into z. So, this boils down to 2 g theta s by p into dz by dn. Now, our objective is to find out the value of dz by dn, which can be obtained from the figure on the right hand side. From the right hand side figure, we can consider a small value of z that is dz. The normal vector can be taken as a dn. So, we can see a normal vector dn on the right hand side of the picture indicated in green color arrow. And then we have dc also indicated upwards. This is in the cut cross section. And then the angle it makes is given as alpha. So, we isolate the triangle here. So, we have alpha is the angle that makes between the dn and the vector. So, the dz by dn is equal to tan alpha. So, we can substitute dz by dn as tan alpha which gives rise to the equation tau l equal to 2 g theta into s by p into tan alpha. However, for small values of alpha, sin alpha equal to tan alpha. So, we can replace tan alpha with sin alpha. So, tau l equal to 2 g theta s by p into sin alpha. So, from equation 2, we have minus p by s equal to minus 2 c g theta, which indicates c equal to p by 2 g theta s, which is equation 8. So, substituting the value of c in the above equation, we have tau l equal to 1 by c into sin alpha, which becomes equation 9. So, from a solution of torsional moment in non-circular cross sections, we have already derived t equal to 2 into double integral of phi into ds into dy which can be approximated as t equal to 2 into area enclosed by the dotted lines on the enclosed area by the cross section a sub e into phi, which is basically the double integral of dx and dy is approximated as a sub e. So, here the phi is a stress function while tau l is the resultant shear stress. Hence, phi cannot be replaced directly with tau from equation 9. Now, we need to find out an analogous term which can replace phi. So, the term should also satisfy the condition phi equal to constant at a cross section. So, step 3 is to finding an analogous term to stress function in terms of shear stress tau. So, let us consider a hollow non-circular tube with a non-uniform thickness. So, you can see the picture here. Uh, X and Y are in the cross section directions and Z is in the along the length of the member. So, we have a small piece ABCD which we can isolate it and we have a shear stress that is flowing here. The thickness at the top is T1 and the thickness at the bottom is T2. We have a small length that delta sub L is taken in the Z direction. In the Z direction is taken as delta sub L. So, we have tau 2 and tau 2 acting in this direction and then the resultant tau 1 and tau 1 are shown at the top as well as at the left hand side of the cross section. So, for equilibrium at a cross section along z direction, we have minus tau 1 t1 delta l plus tau 2 t2 delta l is equal to 0. So, we cancel delta l, we have tau 1 t1 equal to tau 2 t2 is equal to constant. So, this tau 1 t1 is also the shear flow. So, tau 1 t1 equal to tau 2 t2 equal to q which is the shear flow and then the shear flow is constant at any cross section. Similarly, phi is also a constant at a cross section. So, these are all analogous terms. So, we can replace the value of phi with q. So, the value of t, the torsion is equal to 2 into ae into phi can be replaced as t equal to 2 ae into q. Now, step 4 is to take equilibrium forces in the z direction. So, when we look at it, the surface tension S makes an angle alpha and then it makes an angle 19 minus alpha towards the vertical direction. So, this becomes S into cos of 90 minus alpha in the vertical direction, which is nothing but S into sin alpha. Similarly, for the other side, it acts throughout the cross section. So, now let us take the equilibrium forces. We have sigma Fz equal to P into Ae minus circular integral of S into sin alpha into dl equal to 0. The P by Ae is acting in the direction of Z, so it is positive. 
the ysm to sin alpha into dl is acting downwards so it is negative so we have the force equation above now substituting the value of sin alpha from equation 9 we have sin alpha equal to tau l into c so we have p into ae minus circular integral of s into tau l into c into dl equal to 0 so now we substitute the value of c so the value of c is p by 2 g theta into s when we do so we can cancel the p on both sides of the equation and we can also cancel s so we have a sub e equal to integral of tau l into 1 by 2 g theta into dl so ae equal to 1 by 2 g theta which can be taken outside integral of tau l into dl now 2 g theta equal to 1 by ae into integral of tau l into dl we also know that q equal to tau l into t which indicates that tau l equal to q by t so we have 2 g theta equal to 1 by a sub e into integral of q by t into dl so the theta now becomes theta equal to q by 2 g a e into integral of dl by t which is equation 11 now substituting the value of q from equation 10 we have t equal to 2 a e into q so q equal to t by 2 a e so from equation 11 we have theta equal to q by 2 into g a sub e into integral of dl by t so substituting q from equation 10 into equation 11 we have theta equal to t by 2 a sub e divided by 2 g a e integral of dl by t so this becomes theta equal to t by 4 g a e square into integral of dl by t now this becomes t equal to 4 g theta into a e square by integral of dl by t now this can also be rewritten as t equal to g into 4 a e square by integral of dl by t into theta so this is the form of the generic equation t equal to gj theta upon comparing we get the torsional constant j equal to 4 a e square divided by integral of dl by t now integral of dl by t is around the closed loop because it is actually an integral with a circular symbol at the center it means that it, it has to be integrated around the closed loop we can also break it down as a summation of individual elements in a closed hollow cross section so which is simply a mathematical simplification so this integral of dl by t is equal to in sigma of b by t so the j becomes 4 a sub e the whole square divided by sigma of b by t so for a hollow cross section which is given here with b2 b2 as the depth and b1 b1 as the width of the cross section and t is the thickness we can simply evaluate this as per annexure e of page 129 of is 800 as shown here which is 4 a e square divided by integral of b by t for hollow sections here we need to note that the i sub t is given as the symbol for torsional constant but actually in most textbooks it is given as j which is the torsional constant which is much more uniformly accepted and also it is torsional constant not torsion constant as given in the code the code gives torsion constant but in reality it is torsional constant similarly on the right hand side we have iw equal to the warping constant but in reality it is not warping constant it is warping torsional constant so with this one we will complete the class and we look forward to the next class thank you very much